Hello, good evening to you and welcome to News 360. The bulletin comes to you live from the News Hub here at Adiso Ekanda. I'm Natalie Fort. My name is Alfred Okansing. Coming up tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paid. GT Bank and Piccadilly Biscuits. Completed but unoccupied government affordable housing units at Sagnemi in the Greater Accra region deteriorating. Coalition on Right to Information Ghana says it expects nothing less than what has been agreed by Parliament on the Right to Information Bill after it receives presidential accent. Also ahead this evening, court grants NDC Chairman Samuel Ofosu Ampafu and Deputy Communications Officer Kweku Bohin bail of 100,000 cities and one surety each after being charged for conspiracy to cause harm and assault on a public officer. And in business tonight, Ghana Commodity Exchange adds soya bean to its trading platform. International that allow President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi to stay in power until 2030. Stay with us here on News 360. We've got the details on fees and much more news. As always, you could watch us live on DSTV Channel 279 as well as all across the world on 3 News. Let's go on to our first story this evening and some uh, structures of the Saglemi. Affordable housing unit projects have started developing cracks after work stalled almost two years ago. Now, some 645 detached and semi-detached buildings after completion remain unoccupied. It remains one of the many housing structures built with taxpayers' money left at the mercy of the weather. The $200 million parliamentary approved deal commenced in 2012, a major political campaign tool for the NDC at the time. Within the buildings, well fitted rooms with upholstery ready for use. The 5,000 unit apartments are not in the best of shape. It's, it's unbelievable. There's so many things we can do. We can at least give it to people on mortgage basis so that they live in and they pay. The foreman at the site is saying that it is left with the sewage that they have to connect into. They have to connect the buildings into the main sewage tank. It is nothing. Pipes left to rot, towels at the mercy of the weather. The new buildings showing signs of danger. Of the 1,412 units under the first phase, more than 600 are fully completed and ready for use. The minority side of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Works and Housing visiting the site in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency says the facility cannot be left in its current state. In view of the fact that the current housing deficit is estimated about 2 million housing units and growing, the minority demand the following. The government through the Minister of Works and Housing should go into immediate negotiation with contractor Michel's OS, OAS Construlos Ghana Limited to enable them to go back to site to complete the first phase of the project. All the ancillary works needed to enable the occupation of the 636 housing unit completed so far should be done without further delay. Government should show proof of commitment as to the delivery of the 200,000 housing unit earmarked for the regional capitals as contained in the 2019 budget estimate in order to reduce the national housing de deficit. Since work stalled, several workers have been laid off. There are roughly 1,500 workers. What was the reason for laying them off? Because the production is not coming on anymore. We stopped work since uh, 2017 November. Tell me about the chemicals that we see right in the background. You've not worked with them, you've not used them. What are the effects of these things not being used and left here probably unattended to? Yes, because it's a long, it's a long time that we keep those in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see yourself, the sun has taken over. And now we cannot use it anymore, I believe so, even though I'm not a technical man but the expiry date are on them so you cannot use it because since we are not 
doing any uh, bunching the, the concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, these are used for the concrete. So since we are not doing anything like that, there is nothing we can do. Don't be deceived. They look beautiful from the outside, but nobody occupies them. This housing unit have been completed but left unoccupied because the government has caused an investigation into it. Well, the demands of the minority is that the government should allow people to occupy it whilst the investigations continue. They believe the taxpayers' money has been wasted as long as the building remains unoccupied. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Saglemi. Well, Kamala Kluche will stay on that issue and bring you a lot more in subsequent bulletins. But in some other news, the former vice chancellor of the University of Education, Winneba, Professor Mauto Avoke, is calling for his immediate reinstatement and that of his dismissed colleagues by the university's council. Breaking his silence almost day after his dismissal, he argued that he has been exonerated from what he described as the baseless accusation. According to the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Education, Weneba, Professor Mauto Avoke, the Member of Parliament for Ifutu, Alex Afenyo Marking, was deceived to petition the Education Minister on allegations that the council that appointed him was illegal, although President Akufuado had issued a letter giving them a fresh mandate. It is now clear who, in the clock or dead of the night, was meeting the Member of Parliament of a Futu constituency and sharing fabricated materials and official documents of the university and misrepresenting same to him, as recently claimed by the member of parliament himself on various media platforms. Little did we know that we were still going to be at home till date. When all the allegations made against us have been proven to be incorrect, especially by Yoko, a state organization that investigated the said allegation, which similarly formed the basis of the university's own fact-finding investigations. The Yoko report, interestingly, indicated that the transport committee, which is chaired by the pro-vice chancellor, has questions to answer. At the time, Professor Fulbrady was pro-vice chancellor. It has now become very clear that at least two persons, Reverend Professor Antonia Fulbrady and Professor Iban Noel, Nicholas Abeka, the chairman of the governing council, played very critical roles to ensure the wrongful removal of my colleagues and I from our various offices and positions in the university. He further indicated that although the Supreme Court quashed an earlier high court ruling over the mandate of Professor Afo Broni, the chairman of the governing council went on to reappoint him to stay in office. Professor Abeka went ahead to announce the appointment of Professor Fulbrani as active vice chancellor. This purported appointment was also made against the fact that the council had actually acknowledged that Professor Fulbrani's tenure of office as pro vice chancellor was going to expire on 28th February 2018. Today, all those who resist have either been sacked or are no longer members of the council. Professor Mauta Avoke has threatened to go to court if he is not reinstated. We would go back to court in May if no effort at reconciliation has been initiated. In August last year, the former vice chancellor and five other senior officers of the university were asked to step aside by a Winneba High Court after the court determined that he was operating under a defunct governing council. The case was taken to court by one Supikofi Kwaira who argued that the university's council's mandate had expired in November 2013 but the Education Ministry failed to constitute a new governing council prior to the appointment of a vice-chancellor. Right, so this particular issue is indeed generated a lot of uh, reaction after this press statement breaking a silence. Professor Vianso is uh, the reinstated head of the Ejuma campus of the University of Education, Weneba. He joins me in studio and to have a discussion on this. Thank you for your time, Prof. Thank you, Alfred, and uh, thank you for having me, and uh, greetings to everybody. Fantastic. So, you were dismissed as well? Yes, please. So, uh, you've resumed? I've resumed. W when did you resume work? Yesterday, I did. Yesterday? Yeah. Restored with full benefits? I have to wait until I'm paid. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to restore with full benefits. 
you're supposed to. Yes, but sir. that that was not stated. It was not stated. Yeah. So so on 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 what basis of communication did you really get back to work? I want to understand yeah. that yeah, so we know exactly. Yeah, we were, com were com uh, communicated to to uh, that were reinstated mm -hmm. back to our uh, up, up, uh, up positions, and so I went back to my office yesterday. In fact, officials should have gone back the last uh, last week, but uh, we really had to clear a few things before. So once that was cleared. We're done. I see. So, I know a number of you were sacked. Yes. So how many of you have been reinstated? Just three of us. Three out of? Uh, about 23. About 23 of yeah. you. Yeah. I see. But then, it's clear that for you, you, you are accusing some persons. Yeah. Or, or you think this goes beyond just the university council. Yeah. Why do you come to that conclusion? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, it's very clear, first of all, from the recent happenings. One, it's not clear, as we heard the, the, the Vice Chancellor just say, mm -hmm. that uh, Afrobuni actually was the one behind the suit against the university. Mm -hmm. Two, then Yoko, uh, looking at the very document he gave mm -hmm. to the MP, look at all that and said, yes, it's false, just as the MP said. So ordinarily, he has lied on oath. Okay, he, he sent sensitive documents to somebody outside and caused the individual to be prosecuted and sued. So <laughs> automatically, he should not be there. That's the first point. I, is that is that what the Yoko findings this state? No, the Yoko findings said that. Uh, the people, they, they talk like the, the VC. Absolutely, because I'm, I'm looking, in t I've been looking into that, the summary of that particular Yeah, the, the, the Yoko, is ju Yoko just mm -hmm. says that, Yoko, there were a lot of accusations, for mm -hmm. instance, that... Of which, I mean, for in, I, I think that is already known in the public. We know yeah. that yeah. Boss Avokel was, was cleared of yeah. those things that were so brought against him. The, the Supreme Court has, you know, ruled. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, so for me, the, yeah. the point that we are now yeah. is that Professor Bo Volker wants to be restored. Yes. And uh, to that particular position. Okay. Being occupied by Professor for Bronina. Exactly. How possible is that? Yeah, th this is automatic. It's because uh, we want to be ostriches in Ghana sometimes. But it's you, you accuse somebody on base of the accusation, you stepped in. Uh, you step you made you to step aside step aside mm -hmm. and then you went ahead to dismiss him based on various allegations now he's been declared he, he's he's uh, he'd been cleared so automatically he reversed his post now that doesn't mean that perhaps l granted that uh, professor bufroni and the, the the vice chancellor of everybody was right but the fact that somebody has you step aside for instance i've stepped aside i have been um, i've been told to go back so if the person has been stepped aside or dismissed, you now find out through Yoko and other ministers, in fact, including the fact finding committee by mm -hmm. the same council, says that that is not done. And the court, you had the Supreme Court serve mm -hmm. two times and all that. Wh what, are the, what are the reasons why somebody be, should be blocking him from getting his Who position? is blocking him? You're pointing fingers at the edu education ministry. Yeah. O on what basis it's, it's do you do this? You know, what? But they, 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 do you have any proof <laughs> to say that in this education ministry or the education minister doesn't want avocate? Yeah, I but mean, see, 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 let, 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 me tell, let me tell you this. Uh, you know why everybody says that? It's not just me. Everybody says that. For instance, as you stand now, they say that Every person that points to an advocate has been cleared. Get back your position. So automatically, he should go back to the position. There's nothing. So somebody has to move out. Someone has to move out because of our statutes. It says that council has to, to take say. care of things. Now, council take that decision that that person should go. Council is not complicit because it's a very council that alleged all these things. It's not difficult council to go back. So you can, rem you can remember, if you follow that well, mm -hmm. that in their... In their, <laughs> in their document, in, in their press conference about when they sacked all of us, you remember what they did? They justify everything and she said they backed Afroboni. It's about all the things. Uh, so, so somebody has to do that. Mm. Who has to do that? Who, who? So, uh, so the education ministry okay. advising the president said, look, you said one, you went to place said one, that there was, I mean, you and should. All, all of that is now. No, it's not. Yeah, please, it. People need to get near to get this. So you said, the president said this several times two times in the place. So, President, 
I think there's something wrong. We didn't know this. Now we know. Please act. Okay. And the president will act. I want to find out if the ministry will do that. Yeah. That's, so I've been joined on the telephone by Vincent Tessefua, who is the head of public relations at the education ministry. Vincent, can you hear me? Good evening to you. Now, are you going to do what, what uh, Professor Voke and Professor uh, Avian saw is expecting, that after the Supreme Court ruling and the IOCO report, clearing Professor Voke of any wrongdoing, going to go back to the president and say, look, this has been done, and so he has to be reinstated. Unfortunately, we, we lost Professor, uh, I beg, I beg your pardon, Vincent Asifo on the telephone. He speaks for the Education Ministry. But I think, we try to I raise him back Alfred, on the telephone Alfred, again. Alfred, I think that it's, Alfred, it's, it's something clear you, that... I think you need to also say this, because that's very critical. Mm -hmm. The fact that somebody who took over that position didn't do as his office told him to do. That's so critical. Because if, for instance, the president mm -hmm. today decides that he does something in contravention uh, uh, of Respectfully, the, let, yeah. me, let me hold you on to that yeah. point there because Vincent Tassefua is back on the telephone. Let me connect with him now and, and find out what the ministry is going to do about it. Vincent, can you hear me? Hello, Alfred. Great, great. Good evening to you. Now, I was asking now that uh, Professor Avoke has been cleared by the Supreme Court, a Yoko report. Are you going to go back to the president and say, look, now this is the development and so he should be reinstated as he is demanding? Well, let me say a very good evening to you, Alfred. Um, simple answer. Um, the ministry have not met to decide on that. Um, I'm not even sure whether it even lies within the ambit of the ministry to make such a decision. I see. Uh, certainly, it is the University Council that is going to do this, but you are the ministry that has direct oversight over this particular issue. You should take, take some interest in this. So what's your position in the happenings so far till now? Alfred, as you rightly said, it is the decision of the council to make. The Ministry of Education, in my perspective, do not have any locus, if you like, to as it were, make that decision in regards to Professor Avuke, um, whether you're supposed to be reinstated or otherwise. I'm not sure that the Ministry of Education is having that locus to do that. But you, aren't you concerned about uh, the, the, the situation now that, I mean, a court has ruled and, and that the man is seeking reinstatement and there is a substantive vice chancellor when the whole process was still ongoing? Alfred, how was the current vice chancellor nominated or, if you like, put into office? It was the decision of the council. <laughs> This was not a decision by the president, neither was it a decision by the Ministry of Education. I see. But and then in an so event where the council the doesn't... Is how will the Ministry of Education come in in that regard? I, I didn't get the last part. I was asking if in an event where the, the University Council doesn't act, Professor Avoca is threatening a, a court action, will the Ministry step in? The Ministry is having an oversight responsibility. Okay. What we can always do is to admonish the council to do what their acts and their statutes demand of them to do. And that is what the ministry is always interested in. Great. Tassifua, thank you for your time. Vincent Tassifua speaks for the education ministry. This matter, we are not leaving here. I can assure you that we're staying a focus on it uh, in a subsequent bulletin. But I was joined in studio by Professor Vianso. He's the head of the Ejimaku campus of the University of Education, whenever. And uh, he's one of three persons who have been reinstated out yeah. of 23. Okay. So uh, there's a lot more to talk about with this particular issue. Thank you, sir. sir can Grateful. I make just a last statement? Uh, yes. Just, just a second. In, in a yeah, bit. please. So I just want to ask Atepo and the ministry, are they happy that for two solid years, investing in the kind of mess we are in, and that it's mm. not stopping? Are they happy that that they have, they have put a council that's supposed, and a VC that's supposed to reconcile to solve the problems, and that we went from one court case to about 10, 20 court cases? So are, we, are we happy that we had one person sacked and now we have 23? Right. We had one person transferred and now over 200 transferred over the four campuses. Are they happy? So and so what, what oversight responsibility do they have? Great. In any case, 
do they know just last one do they know okay, that as, you, as, as they you. do this I, as they I, do I, this I, 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 okay so I, 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 it's clear and as I said we're not living in here thank you very much following it I'm grateful for I appreciate the opportunity thank you very much so uh it's the head of the Juma campus of UA University of Education whatever but the coalition on the right to information Ghana says it expressed nothing less than what has been agreed by Parliament on the right to information bill before it receives presidential action. At a news conference in Accra, the coalition said it has followed the deliberations in Parliament closely and has captured every amendment, so will not agree to any changes. It's been three weeks since Parliament passed the right to information bill, which got many other stakeholders excited. There were, however, some disappointments as some argued that Parliament failed to address some lapses in the bill despite opportunities to do so. The Coalition on the Right Information, which spearheaded the campaign towards the bill's passage, is of the view, except for a few provisions, the text of the RTI law is solid and robust. According to the Coalition, the document has taken into account all their main concerns, including the constitutional right to information, duty on the state to be proactive in disclosing information, among others. Another major issue over which we battled for forever had to do with which bodies are covered by the law. Should it be only public bodies and state agencies? or some private bodies as well. Member of the steering committee, Akuto Ampao, called for the tradition of the presidential assent, stressing the coalition expects nothing than what has been agreed on. We also want to take this opportunity to inform all stakeholders that the coalition has followed the deliberations in parliament very, very closely. And it has captured diligently every amendment accepted by the house so we expect nothing less than what has been agreed by parliament we don't want to find funny clauses in the bill that is sent to the president for us because there will be trouble i can assure you the coalition noted it still has a long way to go in establishing some preconditions for the efficacy of the law in practice when it finally receives presidential assent. We are not going to wait for one year. And then when the one year comes, then they tell us, wait, we are now you know, going to be appointing our information officers and training them. They should start appointing them now and training them now. The RGR law will provide for the operationalization of the constitutional right to information held by the public and some private institutions, subject to exemptions that are necessary and consistent with the protection of public interests. The RGR bill was first drafted in 1999, reviewed in 2003, 2005 and 2007, but was only presented to Parliament in 2010, but could not be passed due to the many recommendations of amendment. It was brought back to the sixth parliament but could not be passed till the expiration of that parliament on January 6, 2016. The struggle continued till the 9th of March 26 when the bill was finally passed. Stay with us here on News 360. You've got business news coming up with Park with CSRE shortly. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the business news segment on News 360. My name is Park Chris Yassari. Let's begin with happenings on the Ghana Commodity uh, Exchange, where it has added soya bean as a second commodity on its trading platform five months after commencing operations. Now, the addition of soya bean as a trading commodity is expected to promote quality and good price for the produce. <laughs> The Ghana Commodity Exchange, which was launched in November last year, among other products and services, provides storage, warehouse receipts, and financing, drain cleaning, drying, grading, and provision of real-time market and price information. It started trading in white and yellow maize. Demand for soya bean has been growing, particularly in edible oils, flour, 
milk and animal feed industry. The average price is between 98 and 120 cities for the 50 kilogram bag size. The inclusion of soya on the trading platform means warehousing and premium prices for farmers and quality produce for buyers. These warehouses are certified warehouses. It means that they meet na both national and international standards. They have testing, grading, standardization, weighing, and uh, facilities. Uh, they also have uh, uh, you know, professionally, professionally trained staff who are able to manage quality. The CEO of the Ghana Commodity Exchange, Dr. Kadri Alpha, noted the warehouse receipt and its financing system qualifies as collateral for loans from banks. Right now, when a farmer harvests, he doesn't need to sell at the district. He doesn't have to sell at the district. He can bring his commodities to our warehouse. He has a warehouse receipt that he can probably keep for a period of six to uh, three to six months, which is sufficiently a long time for him to be able to get a better market. And then we also have the banks who have come, you know, individually with different borrowing rates. CEO of the National Food Buffer Stock Company, Hanan Abdul Wahab, said the commodity exchange will aid in the country's agriculture modernization process. GCS is positioned as a national exchange to formalize Ghana's agricultural sector and provide better access to agriculture financial market for participants. GCS aims to promote the commercialization of Ghana's agricultural sector and beyond, improve market access, increase market efficiency, and lower transaction costs. A commodity broker, Yao Che, shared some experience. After the establishment of Ghana Commodity Exchange, no price complained of any quality issue, any apotosis, any moisture content. Now, quantity issue. With the of Ghana Commodity Exchange, 50 kg bag is really 50 kg bag. The Ghana Commodity Exchange, GCX, is set up to provide regulated market that links buyers and sellers of commodities to trade by rules while ensuring market quantity and quality, timely delivery and settlement. <laughs> Right, good news for the company there. In other stories, the general manager in charge of investor relations and external affairs at Gold Coast Securities, Benjamin Afre, says a tabled solution to the company's challenges to the Securities and Exchange Commission will soon bring relief to its customers. He was reacting to customers' agitation to demand their investment. He spoke to our reporter, George Quinnan. <laughs> The aggrieved customers were bent on getting access into the Coconut Group Hotel to confront management. Last week, there was a similar protest in WA where some customers issued an ultimatum to management to pay them their investment. Some of the distressed customers, including pensioners, whose investments have been locked up for months, expressed their disappointment with a delay in getting their monies back. <laughs> All the branches are closed. We cannot access our funds for our general upkeep. I only have 500 CDs with the company. I need it now. My mother is sick and I need part of the fund to cater for her. They also objected to plans to have their investment transferred into other products. Management of Gold Coast Securities say they are making efforts to pay customers. My anticipation is that the solutions that we've put together, uh, that we've shared with the regulator, will bring uh, some resolution to this. But even aside that as well, I can also assure you there are customers that we are paying. Mm -hmm. And we update the regulator on that as well. There is an effort to pay. And every week, as and when we raise money, payments are made. Admitting a liquidity challenge, General Manager of Internal Relations and External Affairs, Benjamin Afre, touted the 25-year existence of the company, explaining they would never fold up and would face the problem head-on. These are really, really tough times, mm -hmm. but we are not in any mood to do anything. We want to stay and work through this because we believe that in the long term, the benefits for the customer, for the company and the country is, is, is big. Meanwhile, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEG, 
has directed Gold Coast Fund Management to cease collection or receipts of new funds from the public. The commission says it has received and is reviewing proposals from the company to replace its structured finance product. Well, that's all for the very latest in business news. For more news, you can log on to our website, 3news.com. My name is Parkwis Yasari. Over to you, Alfred. Well, thank you, Parkwis. Civil Business Now, if the national chairman of the ruling uh, party commits an offence, he ought to be tried. Simpliciter. No one is above the law. These were the words of the Deputy Attorney General Joseph Penka and leader of the government legal team in the case, the state versus the opposition National Democratic Congress, National Chairman Samuel Fosuampofo and Deputy Communications Director Anthony Kweku Bohen. Salomon Mia, it's the rest of the story. The Commercial Division of the High Court on Tuesday granted bail to the two national executives of the NDC in the sum of 100,000 cities plus one surety each. This was after they pleaded not guilty to charges of conspiracy to cause harm and assault on a public officer. They were put before the court by the Attorney General after an alleged leak tape revealed the national chairman of the party, Samuel Ofusuampofu, inciting party communicators to verbally insult and also incite violence against the chairpersons of the Electoral Commission and National Peace Council. In his submission for bail, counsel for Samuel Ofusuampofo argued the case was an abuse of the prosecutorial powers of the Attorney General and thus brings to the fore the constitutional issues on his client's right to privacy. He prayed the court for bail insisting his client was not a flight risk and would always make himself available. Counsel for Anthony Kuekubwahin, Dr. Abdul Basit Bamba, described the charges against his client as frivolous and vexatious. He added that his client had an alibi to prove that he was not at the said meeting where the comments were made. The Attorney General, however, did not oppose the bail application but prayed the court to attach conditions that commiserate with the charges. The Deputy Attorney General, Joseph Pemba, spoke to the press after proceedings. If the national chairman of the ruling party commits an offense, he ought to be tried. Simplicity. No one is about the law. And the constitution itself is very clear on this matter. And so any person who falls foul of the law is made to face the law. If at the end of the day, the court finds you guilty or acquits you, that's the decision of the court. A member of the NDC legal team, lawyer Victor Kujuga Daudu, was of the view the leaked tape cannot secure conviction. To the tape that we listened to, I don't think that um, that alone can secure conviction. I don't think so. One of the issues that we are raising is that constitutionally, can you record somebody's secret tape and stand on that without the person's consent? There are issues about was it at a private place or a public place? So can you invade somebody's privacy? These are issues that will have to be looked at. The former president, John Dramani Mahama, and other party bigwigs were at the court to support the two executives. Party supporters also thronged the law court complex amidst heavy security presence. The two were asked to report to the CID headquarters on Monday, March 4, with an alleged leak tape inciting party communicators to assault the chairpersons of the Electoral Commission and the National Peace Council. The Accra High Court, presided over by Justice Samuel Asiedu, ordered the prosecution to furnish the defense with all documents it seeks to rely on in prosecuting this case. The case has been adjourned to May 6th. Selom Amenya, TV3 News, Accra. All right, so it's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Kwedradon. Starting off with comedian DKB, acclaimed comedian, has blamed the slow-paced growth of comedy in Ghana to ill-intentioned vilification and bad-mouthing. Uh, DKB believes comedy will take its rightful place if Ghanaians encourage performers rather than dampening their spirit. To be able to do that, compete favorably, what do we need? What we need is Ghanaians placing value on us when they need be. Stop selling us short to foreigners. Now recently, 
a Nigerian comedian, a very renowned Nigerian comedian, Clint the Drunk, was so frustrated about how Ghanaians undermined their comedians when they come to Nigeria. You are killing our market. You Born Derek Kwabena Boni, DKB has been at the forefront of the campaign to take GH comedy to the next level. But the journey, according to him, has not been smooth. He blamed the inability of Ghanaian comedians to achieve international success to deliberate vilification by detractors. Go there, our people go there, and they sell us short. Our comedy industry is dead. Our comedy industry is useless. There is no hope. Why? You are not encouraging the foreigner to invest in us. As of now, I don't know of any Ghana comedian who has been invited to Nigeria because our own people sell us short. Our own people don't put premium on us when they go out there. And it's, it's a very big head because, look, if you come to a country and I tell you Kofi is the funniest guy, even if Kofi says hello to you, you will laugh. Do you know why? Because I've prepared your mind. But imagine you come and tell you, you terrible, a Kwabna to horrible comedians. Nothing they will do would make you happy. The award-winning comedian regrets the widespread perception that Ghanaian comedians are not funny has made it difficult to even attract sponsorship for comedy shows. Please sponsor us. We deserve it. We will not disappoint you. If we are not worth your sponsorship, how come every month people buy tickets to come for our programs? We are worth it. Forget that propaganda. Forget that perception thing. That perception is a lie. It's just somebody's parochial interest to keep bringing foreign content. We are not forcing people to love us, but if you don't love us, don't spoil our name. And with that, if you're a foreigner and you see good re reviews about us online, of course, you'll be interested in having us visit your country. DKB believes Ghanaian comedians can wrap shoulders with some of the continent's finest when given the needed push by Ghanaians. Deal with it! Deal with it! Deal with it in their mind! Telele. All right, so there you have it, Derek Kwabnaboni asking for support for the comedy industry. We hope they get that. But moving on to the next story, Kofas Media and Old Films is out with the official trailer of the much-awaited movie Away Bus. The story is centered on two sisters who had no uh, choice than to engage in a bus haste with the help of Calibus to raise money to save their dying mother. In the hospital, the star-studded movie features John Dumelo, Fela Makafui, Salma Mumin, Calibus Ahonfe Patri, Master Richard, Ajete Anan, and Moisha Budong. It's set to be premiered on April 20th at the Silver Bed Cinemas inside Accra Mall and the West Hills Mall. Go angry with me. You understand me? The chip of it. It's gonna be a new best legend in life, no one GFE. In Kwasi Afu, we miss him, Anna. Mami, Daka. Bama, wa, nanya, minti. Minti, minya, minya, honne. My daughters don't have money. They are robbing the bus. Kuma, say, nina, mbosu, jashi, rasku. There are four rules. One, keep to the plan. Stay focused. No! Two, speed is key. There is no time to check time. Three, however slow you run, you never get caught. All right, so looking forward to this movie this weekend at the Silverbed Cinemas. I way bus, can't wait for that. My name is Dana Quadrado, but before I go, remember Onya FM Jekiti Easter is happening this weekend, the 19th Friday to Easter Monday, 22nd. And Prior is joining us there. Alfred is coming. Yes, yes, I am coming. <laughs> Natalie is coming. It's going to be exciting. And everybody and is coming. And our viewers are coming. That's true. Fantastic. <laughs> Easter without Jackie T. Is, There's no Easter? There's no Easter. Okay. At all. <laughs> On behalf of the rest of the team, say thank you as always. My name is Alfred Okansi. Mm -hmm. I'm Natalie Ford. Do visit our website, streenies.com, for a lot more news. Have a lovely evening.